Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to join the debate. When available, should long-acting cabotegravir be the first option for PrEP in a public health setting? Yes, we all know how inspiring the results of long-acting cabotegravir or CabLA were from HPDN 0A3 and 0A4. CabLA has been proved superior in efficacy to daily oral TDFFTC as PrEP among cisgender men who have sex with men, transgender women, and cisgender women in a setting of randomized controlled trial. But I'll give you three reasons why CAPA should not be the first option for PrEP in a public health setting, even when it becomes available. First, injectable CAPA is very likely not going to be the most preferred type of PrEP by key populations in Asia. Take Taiwanese GBSM, for example. We conducted a survey regarding preference over different kinds of currently and potentially available types of PrEP using a 10-point liquor scale. Regardless of the cost, current daily PrEP users, as shown by the blue bars, were most likely to prefer monthly oral PrEP, followed by six months subcutaneous injection and daily oral PrEP. Current evidence, uh, current event-driven PrEP users, as shown by the orange bars, preferred monthly oral PrEP the most, followed by ED oral PrEP and six-month subcutaneous injection. By monthly intramuscular injection, as how KBLA is administered, shown in the red dotted box, only ranked fourth preference in both daily and ED PrEP users in our study. Second, Injectable CAPA will not be delivered as readily as oral TDFFTC in a PrEP service model led by key populations. This so-called KP-led PrEP service would let trained KP lay providers who are not healthy professionals, but uh, members of KP-led community-based organizations dispensing PrEP to KPs. This model had an advantage of empowering KPs, helping to decentralize and demedicalize PrEP service, which showed great success in increasing PrEP accessibility and coverage in Thailand. On the other hand, delivering KBLA will mandate intramuscular injection, inevitably engaging more health professionals for technical and even regulatory purposes during the implementation, which will shift the delivery model to an opposite direction. Third, which is very crucial regarding implementing a sustainable preventive measures in a public health setting, the cost effectiveness. At the current available price in the US, Injectable KBLA cannot be cost effective compared to generic TDFFTC. Nellan and others published a more detailed complex cost effectiveness analysis in Annals of Internal Medicine earlier this year. And today we cited a similar yet simpler result she presented at a virtual COI 2021. Using a cohort similar to HPTN 0A3 participants, um, compared with generic TDFFTC, which costs around 8,300 US dollars per year, in order to achieve an ICER of at most 100,000 US dollars per quality, which is a common threshold of being cost effective, KBLA would need to cost 10,200 US dollars per year or less. However, in the real life, KBLA costs 25,800 US dollars per year um, in the US in 2020, as shown in the yellow dotted circle, which is more than double the threshold of cost effectiveness. So to summarize, KBLA has been proved superior in efficacy to daily oral TDFFTC as PrEP in clinical trial setting, but KBLA may not be the most preferred type of PrEP by key populations. It will not be delivered as readily as oral TDFFTC in KP-led PrEP services, and it cannot be cost-effective at the current available price. Therefore, KBLA should not be the first option for PrEP 
in your public health setting when available. Thank you.